So I may be biased, but I really believe that pantheism and paganism and all sorts of other flavors of spirituality that are related to those things play a really unique and subversive role in this society in a really exciting way. And this is really what has attracted me to paganism and pantheism and that has really made me stay with these ideologies, with these practices, with these ways of seeing the world. So one of the things that makes me most sad about our contemporary discourse, about the ideology of our contemporary Western society is how devoid of meaning we seem to have rendered the cosmos, we seem to have rendered the world. Our scientific perspective on the world has really stripped the material of kind of more transpersonal or spiritual meaning. And the way that I understand this to have happened is that during the Enlightenment, uh, so you know, several hundred years ago in, in the West, a certain philosopher started to separate uh, the idea of religion from the idea of science. So they started to see that there were two different kind of ways of understanding the world. There was the kind of scientific, rational mode, and then there was just a more kind of religious, theological mode. And moreover, uh, they developed the idea that there are two kind of forms of existence. There are two kind of different modes of reality, that there is matter and that there is spirit, that there is, you know, the, the universe, that there is man and that there is God. And that these two things are kind of innately separate and divorced from one, the, one another. And as our hegemony, the hegemony of our society kind of shifted from a, a dominant religious uh, Christian perspective to a scientific one. We kind of left all that religious stuff behind. We've kind of ended up in a situation where science kind of reigns supreme and there's space left for religion in our society. Uh, society. Society kind of respects and accepts a certain amount of religiosity, but it's kind of left in this completely separate arena. Science is kind of put to the top and, and insinuated as the correct way of looking at the world by kind of boxing religion off into its own little category as this thing that is separate from the material world. Science is what tells us about the material world, about the universe, it is, it is you know, the, the correct way to view our reality and religion is this sort of extra thing that you can partake in if you want to that will tell you about spirit and God. And I think that this has actually been a huge, huge contributing factor to um, just our contemporary capitalist society, our tendencies towards greed and excess, and um, our complete resistance to accepting that we are essentially destroying the planet and that the, our modes of consumption and uh, capitalist consumerism, that they are not sustainable. Um, that there's just been this separation from, you know, of the sacred and things in which our kind of morals are, are tied up in and the material world. We are sort of being, being been left to our own devices to use science and, you know, shape the material world in whatever way we like without any sort of um, moral imperative um, placed on that. And that's hugely problematic, obviously. If, you know, just all we have to do is look at um, the state of the world around us and the, um, the high levels of injustice and destruction uh, in, in, on this planet today. And I really believe that pantheism and paganism and all things in between, that it has a really important role to play in re-enchanting the physical world for us and reconnecting us to that moral imperative to uh, treat the world more nicely, to, uh, to not just be wrapped up in this kind of material consumption, to place more meaning and, and more reverence on uh, the physical, on, on the material objects that we are so invested in, and, um, and to really have a look at our connection to each other, our connection to the ecosystem and so on. Because if we actually start to see the divine 
in everything around us and in you know in this planet and all around us i think it really kind of shifts our awareness uh, to that injustice it really shifts our awareness onto everything that is destructive about um, our actions on the planet today and it it really kind of leaves no space for us to to avoid our own sense of compassion and our moral obligation to to basically do better as a society. So for all these reasons, I think that it's really important to try and spread uh, the the ideas of pantheism and paganism a little bit wider than our niche. And I know that our, our flavor of, of spirituality and our way of looking at the world is not necessarily for everybody and not everybody is going to just respond to that. It's People can be very dismissive of um, some of the rhetoric of, of paganism and a lot of the practices involved. Um, people might consider a lot of it to be too woo-woo and so on and so forth. But this is kind of why I feel that it's very important for people in the kind of pagan community and the kind of more kind of you know goddess worshipping kind of more woo woo kind of side of things to actually engage with the more scientific pantheists and for there to be a little bit more dialogue going on there and because i think it's probably more through scientific pantheism that we can kind of engage with the wider atheistic community and um, people who just won't be attracted to uh, the more kind of mystical elements of say paganism and things like that but that might actually be um, excited by the idea of seeing the earth as being sacred or uh, in feeling reverence when you know engaging with the world around them and I think right now that's maybe just not being um, marketed very well to the wider uh, community. Um, I, I detest that word in, in certain uh, situations, but I think it's kind of an apt one um, for, for what it is that I'm trying to get at. Um, and I'm not exactly sure in what ways it's falling down and in what ways that we can open up dialogue with, with wider communities. But um, I think maybe talking about how our faiths, our practices, our beliefs, how they intersect with uh, environmentalism and social issues and feminism and things like that. I think opening up that kind of dialogue is probably important. It's probably important for us to show people who care about those issues how our spirituality uh, actually bolsters that. Um, and I'm sure there are other ways as well for us to kind of uh, branch out of our kind of little community uh, just kind of push out the little tendrils and um, maybe draw in people who aren't engaged with those issues either, who um, aren't thinking about environmentalism and and other issues of social justice and um, equality and so on. And, you know, that might actually just be, that we might kind of draw them into this re-enchantment of, of the mundane in, in other ways. But I don't know, it's, it's something that I want to think about uh, in the coming years it's something that I want to kind of keep coming back to and keep reminding myself of because I love creating content for for you for my viewership for my readership I love talking to the pagan and pantheistic communities and the spiritual community but sometimes it feels like an echo chamber and sometimes I kind of want to find ways to escape that a little bit and to kind of let that reverberate a little bit further just to touch slightly different communities and slightly different uh, groups of people just to um, to kind of diversify some of the conversations that are happening outside of our spiritual community and um, yeah just to bring uh, the the joy of what we're talking about here to uh, just uh, a wider range of people I suppose.